in the book of Revelation, chapter 20, we see the millennial reign of Jesus. We see a snapshot of that. Or basically, we see the beginning and for the most part, the end of that reign. But when Jesus returns, this is what we understand as the second advent. He comes back in glory. One of the first things he does is he destroys the enemies of the Jewish people and he takes the Antichrist and his Antichrist personally and puts him into the lake of fire. But nevertheless, and then the next thing that he does, Revelation 20 exact, is he takes Satan. And what is implied is Satan along with the demon spirits, all of those angels that rebelled against God initially. And he puts them into the abyss, which is a temporary place of confinement for demonic spirits. And he places them there, binds them for 1,000 years. Now, what's significant about this 1,000 years is the 1,000 years is the entire length of Jesus's messianic reign. That's how long Jesus would set up his kingdom over the literal earth. What also happens at the earth at this time? Remember, we have just come out of the great tribulation. The earth has basically been destroyed. According to Isaiah chapter 65, Jesus renovates the entire planet. He brings the planet back to the state of basically what it was when God initially gave it to Adam in the Garden of Eden. There is peace in the animal kingdom. Animals no longer devour one another. It has been restored back like it was when Adam had it. All animals eat grass. So the animal kingdom is at peace with mankind. No, all, what is it? The, the tameness. All animals are tame and you can call a lion and say, come here, little kitty kid, and a big lion will come to you and not destroy you. This is what Jesus has done for the planet. This is the restoration of all things, not only Israel, but all things. Now, even Jesus himself. Remember Matthew chapter 17, Jesus talked about how he will be in the kingdom. And when the disciples, Peter, James and John saw, they gave an eyewitness account of what Jesus would look like. They said he shined like the sun at full strength, the glory of Jesus, the power of Jesus, the holiness of Jesus, the beauty of the world that would be given. All of this will be done by Jesus and he will be reigning as king over the entire world with power, goodness and grace and all of mankind. And that's my point. I'm driving it. All of mankind will be beneficiaries of the goodness that Jesus has brought to this awful planet. Now, as we continue to Revelation chapter 20, moving on through we find out that Satan will be released from that prison of the abyss after and only for a short time after the thousand years. That is after Jesus's reign. And when he is released very quickly, he gets mankind. He influences mankind to rebel against Christ. And he brings up an army to try to overthrow Jesus. The Bible said the number of that army and I'm slowing it down, will be like the sands of the seashore. This is not an exaggeration. There will be great numbers of mankind rebelling against Christ. But here's what I want you to see. I want you to stop and think about this. The reason that Satan was placed in the abyss in the first place is so that he would not influence mankind, so that no demon would influence mankind. In other words, Mankind would have it better than Adam did. When Adam was in the garden, there was a creature, the serpent, who was influenced by Satan himself. So Satan did influence our original parents, the woman who influenced her husband. He influenced our parents in the Garden of Eden to rebel against God. But notice, what did Adam had? Adam had paradise on earth, but nevertheless, he had an adversary there who influenced him to be against God. But when Jesus comes to reign, Satan and all of his demonic hordes have been in the abyss. 
So mankind was able to see how good it is under the system of God alone. And then when Satan is finally released just for a little while, it amazes me. It absolutely amazes me how successful he is in getting man to rebel against Jesus. The world is wonderful. So don't ever tell me that even if mankind had paradise, man would be good. We will see that even after man has been given paradise and then the Lord allows Satan to be, re to be released one more time. And this will be Satan's last time. One more time, man will still listen to the lies of Satan. And what's my point in all of this? Is something in human nature, the very root of who we are, that makes us rebel against God. And I'm speaking now specifically to Christians, just like Paul did. For what did Paul say in Galatians chapter six? In speaking against spiritual pride, Paul says, be careful in thinking that you stand lest you fall. For if a man think of himself to be something when he is nothing, he has made a fool out of himself. We as Christians need to be mindful of the sinful tendencies that we still have. And again, what did Peter say? Even speaking to Christians concerning the arrogance of pride, spiritual pride. He says, God humbles those who are full of pride. But what does he do? He exalts the he exalts those who are humble in nature. Let us always be mindful concerning where we are with God. Have a humble perspective and a visualization, a conception, a humble way of thinking about ourselves to understand we need Jesus all the time. Why? Because even if you gave us paradise, we'll still find a way to mess it up again. And that's exactly what's going to happen when Jesus gave back.